The work desperately seeking paradise continues a new direction of your practice. The work was already shown last year at your big exhibition at the Musée Gourmet in Paris. Um, is it right that you are taking the pictorial grid into a new dimension of sculpture and installation with this work? Well, uh, Desperately Seeking Paradise uh, is a work of mine in which I believe uh, most of my conceptual and formal concerns uh, from throughout the career have come together. Uh, I, was, I was trained as a painter and uh, painting as an idea is something that has, you know, uh, that fuels my practice. I find it so fascinating to see uh, makers from throughout the history, from cave times to until present, photographers, printmakers, painters, how they negotiate and deal with two-dimensionality. And two-dimensionality as, as, as an interest of mine manifests itself in my early works in the form of grid paintings, and then later on it gets translated into uh, photo mosaics with you know, strong pixelation as a strong element in them. However, uh, even in my three-dimensional works, I feel that it's basically my interest in two-dimensionality and the con questions to do with two-dimensionality that I'm exploring or taking further in my three-dimensional works. So the work, uh, What Lies Between Flesh and Blood, takes up a theme that you have explored for several years now, as you've just described. How does this uh, relate to earlier works, like the Red Carpet from 2007, or the well-known Veil series? Um, I would even take you uh, further uh, back in time. Um, uh, in fact, this work also relates to my work from the early 90s, uh, which I would like to be call something deceptively abstract. Um, or they use this, uh, abstraction as an idea or as a subject as opposed to being abstract themselves. Apart from that, this work, yes, this does uh, relate to my works Whale series and Red Carpet because uh, in this work, in this series, I have used two kind of images to form these uh, abstract looking paintings. The images are uh, um, either skin, uh, uh, both skin and blood. Skin is taken from zoom in photography of uh, zoom in picture of uh, fla fashion magazine, print media, pornography, and uh, images of blood are taken from either from my own photography of Slaughterhouse or from medical journals or from media pictures. So in a way, I'm taking um, the images of skin and blood out of the context where they belong to and putting them together in a new context to formulate a work that looks like a, 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 a geometric abstract painting from our times. And in doing so, I'm in a way uh, translating or referring to the theme, the popular theme of uh, sex and violence prevailing in, in media and on life around us, which may sound very crude, the theme itself, but I, if I look at it in this fashion that sex can be, you know, reduced to the skin and violence can be reduced to blood. And if you look at skin and blood, they, are, they have a, a spiritual connotations also, being so close to each other through our skin. So these two extreme, the spiritual aspect and, 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 and it being crude uh, because of being a popular theme in our times, I'm just putting them together. And the third layer comes from the reference of art history and how uh, you know, uh, the idea of abstract come in, comes into play. So the language series, which you are showing at um, your exhibition at the Listen Gallery that opens tomorrow, um, takes up images of science from the streets of Lahore. Um, so tell me something about the source and the meaning of those signs. For example, uh, most of the text that you will see in this work, um, it's Urdu based, Urdu script based at least. And there are few uh, English based as well because that is also part of the uh, uh, part of our uh, everyday life. But even the ones which are written in Urdu script, uh, they, more than half of them are transliterations. For example, this one uh, uh, text is Victory Laundry Works or Tariq Tent Service or um, um, uh, Welding Store or Stationery Mart. These are all uh, not translations as such, but transliterations from English and then written in Urdu script, which is another you know, uh, um, um, a layer adds a layer of meaning to this work. And uh, there are quite a few other contextual references because there are pictures uh, which shows the context where they are 
uh, you know, were placed, you know, the businesses and the shops and, and uh, houses and, and, and the roads. Um, so uh, the reason I'm using, you know, this um, um, record of text, almost all of it from the city where I live, and because I wanted to juxtapose it or translate it into a one unified image which resembles some generic abstract painting from, from last few decades. And as we know abstraction as an idea from our times, it's uh, from the mainstream West, Western culture, it's supposed to be poetic and, and, and a unified image representing oneness as opposed to a literal reference. So these are the two extremes uh, in every way possible that I'm trying to put together and juxtapose and confront with each other in one work. So the sculptures that would be part of our show, the books and the newspapers, what are they? Are they photography or are they sculptures? Um, they're mostly sculptures, I would say. Uh, however, it's for the viewers to decide. Uh, the photography and photo content is a major part of it. They are extremely dependent on it. Um, however, unlike uh, photography in a two-dimensional format, which is so convincing and so believing, they tend to expose its limitations. And that is the very idea behind this work, to photograph uh, an object, a simple object for my surroundings, just, just dealing with it uh, uh, like the one deals with the traditional subject matter of uh, still life. And this random selection then I translate in terms of photography by taking various different fa pictures from different sites and recording light and darks and colors in that fashion and putting it together, assembling it together by printing it on uh, aluminum and, and so uh, what happens that you know, when you take it out of that context and then see it in a gallery space in a different light, the light recorded on all different sides confronts uh, with the light that is falling in that situation and in that way something that we believe so convincing and believing is no longer uh, works in that fashion.